I'll give it a quick second for everybody to file in. Um, I got a lot of notes over here to my left of uh, what I want to talk about. And uh, this might actually be a part one because there's so many different things you work on in this arena. Um, if you guys have been following my channel for a long time, um, actually, eh, it's not that big a deal. Uh, if you guys have been following my channel for a long time, you guys have probably seen me constantly shifting and changing my looks and like trying out new stuff. I'm constantly experimenting, whereas some people, they get stuck in the mud and they never switch anything up. They're, um... <laughs> all right. Thanks for Sean. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, I'm constantly switching up my style. I'm constantly trying out new things. I want to constantly improve in all aspects. Um, I see this as something that is worth trying out. Um, I, I never want to be the person that um, ever doesn't try everything in his power to improve his his stance with the opposite sex. Some of you guys will complain and bitch and say, this is the reason why I cannot get good at this. And that just the, the only thing that ever annoys me is that by itself is the fact that you guys are coming up with excuses for why you can't do something. When in all actuality, it's completely in your power. Now, if it is looks then there's so much you can fucking do. You guys can look through my channel, like over the course of years, I have like 400 plus videos on this channel, 400 videos where I am like constantly trying out new styles, fashions, trying to do beards, hairstyles. I'm starting like playing with my eyebrows, start playing with contact lenses, start whitening my teeth, start getting like, um, like Invisalign. Like I'm, tr I'm trying so much different shit, getting new piercings, getting new tattoos. I'm, I'm trying everything under the sun. I'm not just doing game though. As I've said multiple times, I have a lot of friends who don't give a fuck about looks maxing and still crush it with girls. They don't give a fuck. All right. You guys have probably seen some of them on my channel. Some of them will come on and then like, uh, you know, you guys are like, there's no way this guy is actually good with girls. And the, the truth is, so if if this is your excuse for why you can't, can't get good with the opposite sex, I want to completely crush this too. This I want to make it to where there's no chance of there being like any like stopper for you to get like whatever result you want with women now here's the thing if you want gorgeous 10 out of 10 9 out of 10 girls you, you have to be competitive you can't expect to get like hot girls like that without putting any work in you put in like two years of going out gaming and you're like i haven't i'm not getting the fucking dime piece girls yet game doesn't exist i've been at this shit for 12 fucking years 12 fucking years and i mean going hard i mean like going underneath the masters trying to find the people trying to pay for boot camps going in and, in and again trying to find every like not even just like getting stuck at whatever they tell me i'm like i'm writing down notes all the fucking time I'm doing field reports i'm trying to find new angles of things that i can do to prove my results and the results of my clients and then you come to me saying like this shit doesn't work blah 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 you guys are still doing the same openers still being the same person still saying the same thing the same fucking way and expecting different results you see how obscene this is? You see how like this just doesn't make any fucking sense? You're putting in the same energy. You're doing the same fucking thing every fucking time and expecting a different result. You're fucking insane for even thinking that would be the case. It, it's not even logical. You, you guys get in your headspace thinking like, hey, logically speaking, if I just put in a fuck ton of work into this without ever changing anything whatsoever, then guess what? Then like, then I'm going to get better. No, 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 no. Getting from like early beginner to intermediate is easy. It's getting from intermediate to advanced, which is really tough because that's when you have to actually start thinking critically. And it's one of the things whenever I have clients come to me for coaching boot camps for online things where I have to teach them the most, where it's like I have to teach them how to think critically. You can't have me constantly, like, unless you want to throw fucking like just, I don't know, money at the wall to have me like spoon feed you all the fucking answers. That, that could be the case too. But as, a, as also somebody who pays for boot camps and for coaching clients and coaching calls, I, I don't want that. I want to also learn how to get better at this myself too. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to be like, like an endless pit of like throwing money at a coach. So you have to learn how to think critically. The only way to get good at this is to think critically. And the way you do that is writing field reports, pen to paper, thinking things through, things through critically. Last night, I, I, I went out last night and I was super out of it. I'm actually getting off of having like a bit of a flu. I was a little sick this weekend. And I went out and I was super tired and I went out anyways. And, uh, I still realized all the shit that I could have done differently. I could have done so much shit differently. And, and, um, I sat here with a pen and paper scribbling furiously thinking about like what I could have done to change my outcome. And it just pisses me off that people get lazy 
and they may be put in like a year to two years, like three years, four years, five years even into this shit, not thinking things through critically, not ever working at this. And they say this shit doesn't, you can't improve your results. All right. So have you ever tried to change your hairstyle? Let's, let's actually get into it. Have you ever tried to change your hairstyle? All right. Let, let's say right now, let, let's go shave your head. Let, let, if I were your coach and I dragged you to the fucking barber right now and I said, shave your head, what kind of reaction would you have? More than likely be an emotionally visceral experience where you start shaking, you start sweating as if you're about to approach a girl. Why is this? Because you're going through ego death. You're going through ego death. It's really tough to change like past habits. You've, you've gotten very consistent with the person you have been. Is why, again, I changed my, it's another reason why I change my fashion so often. It's because it, it keeps me loose. It keeps my ego loose. So I can constantly change and I keep moving it into a different direction. If you if you don't ch ever change, you, you never, you can't develop this like fluid, very flexible kind of personality that allows you to, to evolve and grow um, with the times. It's like why old people always, have you ever seen that old person who still wears overalls? It still dresses as if it was the 60s or the 50s. Um, it, it's because uh, you, it's because that person got stuck in ego. And, and if he were to like not go out in his overalls and it was dressed similar to me, you know what would happen? He'd have an ego death. He'd be on the, he'd almost want to cry. He'd be, he'd be hiding inside. It, it's because of ego death. So a part of also changing your fashion and working on looks maxing is also, it helps like almost like, like it helps create more of a flexible personality. It allows you to change more readily. If, if I want to change a client, I tell them to get a haircut almost every time. Like about 60% of my clients that get on a phone call with me, I tell them to change their haircut. Not because the, the haircut is such a big deal, but because the ego attached to the haircut is. I want to break the, the ego attached to the haircut, attached to the fashion. Again, if you guys look at my, my, my YouTube videos throughout the years, you guys will see how often I change it. And it's not just simply for the fashion itself, though that's kind of cool too. I like, I want to look like the person that I'm trying to become. It's also for the simple fact that you are forcing your ego into change by just simply doing something simple as changing your haircut, by wearing a hat differently, by doing a different style, by doing these things differently. It, it helps loosen up and break up your ego. If you dress and look like the person that you, that has the results of women that you want, how much easier is it to be that person? A lot fucking easier. It's a lot easier for a six foot 10 guy to believe he is good with girls than it is for a five foot 10 guy to be fair it, it comes down to the ego but though it comes down to what society says is like this is what the guy like however society said short guys were good with girls and guys that were tall are too like lanky and gawky then it'd be easier for ego to add backwards rationalize that you're good with girls and it doesn't make sense for you to fight culture to fight it makes more sense for you to to um to align with it so then whenever you hear uh dumb advice from idiots who don't know what the fuck they're talking about you align with those 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 uh, value systems i've seen people of all different shapes sizes blah blah blah. that they, they get good with the opposite sex um yeah i, I do have a local barber um i actually I, I learned how to shape up my beard myself for my hair though um i do go to a barber um i go to somebody i trust uh i do sometimes cut it up and shave it myself because i do travel a lot so that's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, but I do sometimes cut it up myself. So I got pretty good at it. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get into like looks maxing. Okay. After about nine minutes into the video. So first and foremost, um, you guys want to study the shape of your head. Different shapes mean different kinds of hairstyles. There's a bulky, like kind of like a, like a, like a strong jaw, wider face kind of look that has a different kind of look. There's an oval kind of head that has a different kind of look. There's a round face that has a different kind of like hairstyle you want to do. Whatever facial, whatever your face is or your head's like shape is, means that you have to do a different kind of hairstyle. And you can easily look this up online. You can check this out. Um, I'm getting into like some weird different things here and there. But um, the big thing with girls is that you just, you want to feel, feel like almost like an archetype. Now, if you want to be good with girls, what's the archetype of a hairstyle that you want to fulfill? The, the, the idea is that I'm, I'm good with girls. I'm socially aware. I'm socially intelligent. I'm a powerful person. You have this kind of hair, this kind of head shape. What's the kind of hairstyle that's going to align with this, this, this vision of who you want to be. You want to be better with girls. Cool. Well then in that case, what, what kind of hairstyle that aligns with this kind of, this kind of face shape is going to fit it here. And I'm going to drop the AC. This thing started pissing me off. There. 
There we go. Oh, and don't mind my place. I just actually moved in here not so long ago. So I'm still trying to figure out the furniture. Um, but yeah, you want to, you want to take on an archetype of somebody that is good with girls. What's the archetype? Is it like the bad boy? Is it the sporty person? Is it the, the, um, the guy in the suit and tie who's rich and suave and who looks like he could be out of like maybe Grey's Anatomy or who could be out of 50 shades of gray. What's the guy that you're trying to embody that's going to get the girls for me. It's the bad boy. I've been working the bad boy slash preppy guy for a while. It's been kind of the look, the archetype that I've been taking on that it's been getting me girls. You, you want to almost tell the girl, the girl you're talking to a story. Um, you want to tell her a story of who you are. And if you can tell her a story of who you are, she can more logically back the reasoning for why she likes you. So for me, I do all this dumb shit. Um, I, I paint my nails, wear earrings, um, earrings. Uh, I have nose ring. I have tattoos. Um, a lot of you guys who come from cultures that are like that are usually considered not very masculine, Indian, Asian, Oriental of nature. Then you guys want to take on more bad boy type tendencies. You guys want to try like do everything in power to to make yourself to almost separate yourself from that culture because what happens is a girl's going to see you instantaneously she's going to put you to a certain character or, or an archetype now again game does overpower this if you're just cool suave dope bad or you're you're grounded you're masculine it's overpowered but you cannot always be in the pocket you can't always be in the pocket right now i'm tired as fuck you guys can't tell i'm exhausted i you can't always be in the pocket so when you're not in the pocket um when you're not in the socially powerful headspace, then what is there to do? Fall back on the archetype. It makes it a lot easier for you to um, to also like look at yourself in the mirror. Like to be fair, if you look like a certain type of guy, you look at yourself in the mirror, and you're like, "Damn, damn!" It, it's a lot easier uh, for people to like for you to backwards rationalize. You are that person. It just makes it tenfold fucking easier. Um, you can try different hats. So for me, like, I mean, <laughs> I have a very a big forehead. I have a big forehead. Like my, my hair goes pretty far back. So what did I do? I went to a barber, as somebody mentioned over here. I got a nice ass haircut and I go to the same guy every time who does my hair the way I like it. Um, I do switch it up quite a bit. Uh, if this actually, the next thing I want to do after this is I want to actually uh, get it completely cut off and see how it works shaven because I'm about experimentation. If this is not the best hairstyle, which this so far has been one of the better hairstyles I've done in a long time. Um, if this is not by far the best hairstyle, then I'm going to switch it up and try something new. And also to change my ego up, which is the most important thing is that I believe I'm sexy. Um, and uh, breaking up, changing your hairstyle, um, it's going to force me through ego death. Again, it's going to force me through ego death, which will help me evolve and change to somebody different. It'll help me evolve into somebody that I want to become. So by changing up the hairstyle, I might even dye it blonde. Who knows? I might even dye it like bleach blonde just because fuck it. Why not? Um, it will more lean into the idea that I'm a certain type of individual. Um, now, next thing's next. Um, I think The Rock, Dwayne Johnson said this, and it's true. Being in shape does make it a lot easier to to wear certain hairstyles, to wear certain like fashion trends and whatnot. Now, for me, uh, in Avery and AG, we're a little overweight. Um, I lost a lot of weight and I've been also gaining a lot of muscle as well, but I'm still have a little bit of a pudge on me. Now, black is a really good color to hide it. Now, if you're like me and you're like a part of the pudge crew, um, wear black. Black like hides a lot of like shape issues. Um, also understanding your, your body type and how to dress it is huge. Ectomorph, endomorph, mesomorph, uh, understanding which one you are helps a lot for dressing yourself. I'm naturally a body type that makes me fat, actually. Um, it's a it's a lot of work to keep it down. Honestly, I, I eat like very little. I can get very strong very fast, but I also get very fat very quick. So um, I have to make sure that I keep my calories down every day, and that's how I keep my myself looking good. Um, if you look in shape, most of the things you will wear will look better. Now, if you're still in the process of losing weight, blah, 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 wear some stuff that shows off your shoulders. A lot of guys who gain a lot of weight, you guys have big arms and big shoulders. Wear some like jackets, wear layers. Layers are your best friend. Um, it'll also wear like it'll also show you off in the best way possible. Um, 
some simple fixes, also some things that are outside the box thinking. I, I always talk about outside the box thinking because I, I get annoyed again with people who are like, your genetics are the only thing that fucking possibly matter. Blow my brains out, please. Um, there's so many things you can do. You can wear contact lenses to make your eyes more blue or just blue in general. You can uh, get veneers. You can whiten your teeth like I do. I whiten my teeth all the fucking time. Uh, you wear a beard to strengthen your jaw like I did. Now, a lot of you guys are now going to say like, hey, um, I can't grow a fucking beard, blah, blah, blah. Um, I couldn't initially either. So I started doing certain things. Like, so what I did was I let it just grow for a while. If you guys actually roll back on my YouTube channel about maybe like four or five months ago, you guys will see me this unruly fucking wild beard that would just like slant to the side and whatnot. Well, what I was trying to do was letting it grow so it could get some like bulk. And then once it got to a bulk, then I started cleaning it up and I, sh I shaped it. Um, also, you can, there's also certain things you could do. So you guys, like some of you guys will say it gets itchy. There's beard wash. The reason it gets itchy is because it, there's bacteria not washing it properly. So there's beard washing used with uh, acid, silicic acid, that specifically cleans it up. Um, there's also beard thickening uh, spray that you can put into it. You rub it in your hand, he's putting it into your beard, and it'll thicken it up. Um, there's also different ways you could grow it. So I started growing it on the side over here and started giving me a little bit more of like uh, more of a full beard look. Um, I started also learning how to shape my beard up so it gives me like a strong jaw. Um, I also learned how to do a little bit of fade. Um, learned that from my barber. I actually do this all my fucking self now. Um, I also clean up my eyebrows. I, I literally clean up my eyebrows. If you guys think it's gay to clean up your eyebrows, grow up. If you think it's gay to like fucking paint your nails, grow up. If you guys think it's gay to get contact lenses, grow the fuck up. Wear jewelry. Wear shit. Like, do what's the what's the point A to point B? Look, we're trying to be gangsters. The other fucking losers out there, they can do what the fuck they want. They can decide not to like paint their nails or do this or do that because because they're afraid because they're afraid of what people will think of them fuck them fuck those losers we're different we're deciding that we want to be the baddest motherfuckers alive we're deciding that we want to be the top one percent the top one percent doesn't like fucking cater to the fucking losers do what the fuck you want all right like um it always comes down to like this idea of like what will everybody around me think fuck what everybody around you thinks you're the person that people should be worrying about what you think and that's the guy that girls go for they don't go for these guys that are um, humming and ah and hawing. They're they're going for the guys that like say this is what's cool, that's what's not. I decide what's cool. You decide what's cool. We decide what's cool. The other losers outside of our crew, fuck them anyways. You know what's funny? It's so it's it's hilarious how those guys will say something online or say something like behind your back, but to your face, they think it's the coolest fucking thing. They may because you might be so cool, they'll start actually even dressing like you over a period of time over the course of months of seeing you like this and getting the results that they want. They'll start dressing. Dude, I, I've talked so many people in this fucking painting their nails. It's so dumb. It's the dumbest fucking thing, but then they start doing it themselves. Um, with your fashion trends, you want to wear things that broaden your shoulders uh, more thin your hips out. So if you have broad shoulders because you're an overweight kind of guy, wear something that like that makes your, that your shoulders look bigger. Then like wear some tight pants. That will make your pants look a little bit more, you know, scrunched in. Uh, if you want to go more of the cowboy look, though, that's also a great look, too. It's another archetype you can fill. Uh, cowboys, generally speaking, they don't wear as tight of jeans as somebody like me. I, I wear, I dress like kind of like more um, skateboarder-ish, I guess you could say. But it's a look and it's a style and I, and I take it on. Um, again, if you're one of these people that's trying to watch this channel to like, if you this looks maxing isn't my thing. Charisma and getting girls is. Um, so I will say this. Um, if you're trying to looks max, the only thing that I would say is just constantly, constant trial and error. Constant trial and error. Try something out. And if it doesn't work, try something else. So constantly try something else. I used to wear this fucking super, like this super thin red shirt that hugged my body. And I wore it for probably about two months when I first started gaming before I got working with RSD. And after a while of wearing it, because I heard red was like a color that makes people more attractive. And then after wearing it for a while, I was like, oh, shit, this looks dumb as fuck. Because I saw myself in a picture with it. And I'm like, oh, never mind. I'm not going to wear that anymore. So try it. Tried it out. Didn't work. Try something else out. Uh, it's getting trying some new shit all the fucking time. So my fashion is tried and true. It's been tested. I've tested it. And you don't know what your style might be. I don't, I don't know what your style might be. I have some friends who are blasted with tattoos. Um, I have friends who wear overalls, like I was just making a joke about, who wear overalls and some tight pants that looks fucking dope on them. I, I don't know what your fashion is. This this fashion right here that I've been trying, there might be other fashions that would fit me really well. And for that reason, I'm, I'm going to try those ones out. Um, but 
yeah, you, you guys want to be constantly testing. Test. Don't don't get stuck in a way and just be like, I'm gonna dress like this for the rest of my life. Why? It's also it, it also makes your your ego more rigid. So I'm trying to make if you guys are getting on a coaching call with me, or you guys are in boot camps, and I'm trying to make you into a gangster, I'm trying to make you into a bad motherfucker that girls love and chase and fucking thirst for. Do you know how hard it is if you can't even change your hairstyle? Your ego won't even allow me to change your hairstyle, and yet I need to make you into somebody else that is completely fucking different than what you are currently. That's why it's such a big deal for you to constantly change your hairstyle, your fashion, your shit. Like, even if it's something small, like something wearing earrings or rings or uh, or even something bigger, like getting tattoos. For me, getting tattoos, every time I get a tattoo, it allows me to almost change. Oh, by the way, I will answer all the questions in the comments here pretty soon. So if you guys want to ask anything, go for it. Um. Yeah, I'm still trying to fill some spots uh, for a certain boot camps. The Chicago boot camp right now, I'm still trying to fill that spot that got opened up. So if anybody wants to fill it up, it's for a single Mayo weekend. It'll be pretty sick. I have a bunch of boot camps here in Vegas. So if you guys want to come to Vegas, cool. I run a ton of boot camps out here right now. Um, also, am still doing coaching calls, even though I'm no longer doing the six month coaching call. That's just that was just unreal pricing on that. Um, so if you guys want that, just let me know. 702-841-9909. Uh, <laughs> So here, I'll read. I'll read through some of these pretty soon. Well, actually, I'll read through them right now. Um, going to a barber, by the way, is is ideal. The barbers, especially if the guy dresses like a pimp. Um, those guys, like the guy that did my hair here, I just got my hair redone like not too long ago. Um, the guy was like showing me his Instagram, was like just having all these baddies hitting him up. Um, ask, tell him, hey, I just want to look sexy. Make me look sexy, and the guy's gonna fuck it up. Make you look fucking amazing, like a million bucks. Uh, basically frame control what you believe in yourself exactly but it's 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 so hard to to believe in yourself when society kind of pushes on you in a way so you want to kind of make it as easy as humanly possible and once you do this, develop like a stronger frame of i'm a bad motherfucker and, and fuck the world i do what i want then it's easier but in the meantime dude make your just make it make, make it as easy on yourself as humanly possible dress in the way the society says that if you look this way you are this way if you are the guy that just doesn't give a fuck because I do have some of those friends who just don't give a fuck and it doesn't matter. But I'm one of those guys who isn't that way. I do give a fuck. I'm too empathetic. So I have to like make myself look a certain way. And it helps me kind of ease my brain into being the certain person. It helps me ease into being like this bad mother, like this, this guy that's good with girls. And it's a lot of, most of you guys are that way too. Um, Yeah. Uh, detail your style based on different uh, age brackets you enter. I, I've tried, I thought about a bunch of different things. Yeah. Age brackets. Um, I think about, I'm, I want to make sure that, so I'm 31 now and I still want to fuck 18 year olds. Honestly, I still want to mess around with 18 year olds, 19 year old girls. Like, I mean, not date them seriously, but I still like, so I, I do also study the younger fashions and make sure that I'm not becoming an old geezer. <laughs> uh, I do. I also do look at guys who are older than me who are getting the results that I want and how they're dressing. And I think to myself, okay, cool. What is about their style that I like? What is about their energy that I like? What is about their mindsets, their belief, their lifestyle that I like? Um, the game is dead. Society's changed. Dude, that's dumb. You're that, that's dumb. I know you're trolling, but it's dumb. Um game game matters. Game matters because it's biology. Uh, but we're not gonna get into that. I know like a video about me doing talking about looks maxing is obviously gonna draw people to it that don't believe in game. So cool. <laughs> uh hey bro, yeah. Sorry, and I know I, that you guys want me to come to Greece too. Um I will eventually, but I'm I do I'm doing so much shit over here in the states right now. It's it's hard for me to even like think about Europe. Um, but I will come out there eventually. Uh, anyways, yeah. If you guys are not doing everything, if you guys think looks are the only thing that matters, and you're not doing everything in your power to work on it, hitting the gym, taking care of yourself, eating clean, because eating clean does like it affects your skin. If you're having issues with skin, which I'm not saying everybody is, but if you are, guess what? What you need to start doing is you need to start eating cleaner, getting plenty of sleep. Um, the glow to your skin, even the reason that like, sometimes like that, that glow to your skin, that little, like that, that, um, that tan can be attractive is because it's an indication that your skin, that your body is healthy. That little slight red tinge, whereas like a yellow tinge is an indication that your liver is fucking failing to be fair, but your skin color is a good indication of like where your health is, which I, I I'm a night game person. I'm nocturnal. It's hard for me to get like sun. I was literally sitting over here on the patio today, just laying out in the sun so I can get some extra skin color. Um, if you guys want to look even better, skin getting a tan, which I very clearly do not have. I'm very pale. Uh, getting a tan is an immediate way of getting like looking way fucking better. If you don't manage your 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 hair, your body hair, 
you don't trim it. You don't trim your, your armpit hair. It, the armpit hair will hold in more smell. Um, also getting good cologne, high expensive cologne. The best clones I've ever seen are all over a hundred bucks. Uh, if your cologne is under a hundred bucks, then you're fucking jipping yourself hard. Smelling good. <coughs> smelling good helps out so much. And it gives off an immediate feeling of value and status. Like if you have a nice cologne, um, my friends have been buying a lot of them lately. I cannot tell you out of the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I get given so much cologne by different girls that, I'm kind of like just, I don't know, experimenting around. But the best clones are all over 100 bucks by far. Um, there's one that I have been using that's a lot cheaper. It's called Tin, but it's still expensive. I think it's like 50 bucks. Um, yeah. I'm not dumb. It's just people are getting more conservative. Been learning game for five years. Can't take action. Maybe I'll forward one, your work jobs one day. I'm definitely missing something. It's not that you're dumb. It's just that believing that is dumb. Um, I'll, I'll let you think about that a little bit, man. It's... um. Just because you've been in this for five years doesn't mean it was intelligent effort. I've never seen anybody that moves and speaks in the way that I talk about and doesn't get girls. If you're not getting girls, it's because you, you're not changing. Um, I'm guessing it's a lot about building up social momentum by doing approaches and field reports every day. Um, yeah. It's also about brainwashing yourself. I, I'll stand in this fucking, I'll stand in front of this fucking mirror on occasion. And I'll, I'll talk myself up. I'll, I'll, I'll tell myself how sick I am. I'll tell myself what a bad motherfucker I am. I'll tell myself that I'm a mean motherfucker. Like how many of you guys believe you're a bad motherfucker? Like to get girls nowadays, you have to be a bad, bad motherfucker. Cause you're not just competing against like people in like your, your little social circle. You're competing against people on Instagram, you're competing against people on YouTube, on the internet. These guys are at such a different level. You're now you're, they're comparing you against Ryan Gosling. So in order to get a girl, you have to become like just, blithely unreal confidence like you almost got to act like a god at times like you just you just don't understand like that like you just the world is just like such like a playground to you and if you don't have that then it's like so game a lot now is just demonstrating value what is value not value of money of things value of like personality persona of energy of like of people reacting to you a certain way of girls chasing you of you <clears throat> just having a, like a deep understanding because it's hard to act and move in a way if you don't believe you are that thing. If you don't believe you are sexy, the, 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 the key to, fi to finding trait of every guy I've seen who is good with girls is the belief that they are sexy. If you believe you're sexy, the, the movements and the speech patterns become effortless. It becomes effortless to become that guy, to act in a certain way around girls. You guys become like reactionary to women. And like they used to talk about this a lot in the pickup community, becoming reactionary to girls. Um, becoming like in your own purpose. You guys are so worried about what a girl thinks. You're like, I'm five foot five. So I guess it matters because I'm five foot five. I'm like, fuck what the girls think. Fuck what women think. The reason the girls don't like you is not because you're five foot five, but because you care that girls say you're five foot five. Like that, that does, that's honestly what it is. Like I have girls all the time fucking with me. Do you, I don't, <laughs> to be fair, actually, they keep, they fuck with me a lot less now because of the energy, but if you let them fuck with you, then they're gonna not they're not gonna believe in you. They're not gonna believe you either. If you don't believe in yourself, like to where a girl says one thing about you, and all of a sudden your entire reality is shaken, your confidence is shaken. Of course, the girl's not gonna find you fucking sexy. Because you one fucking sentence made your entire reality crumble. You're are you are you somebody who has status? Fuck no, you're not. Because it, it took one sentence for her to fucking tear down your fucking castle. You're not you were faking it all along. You weren't actually that guy. <coughs> um I'm guessing it's a lot more about social men. Uh, does that apply to day game though? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, girls a lot more in a logical head space. So attraction. So there's like logical and emotional attraction. Um, in day game situations. Um, yeah, girls are attracted to status. And it could be like the whole looks thing. It, it's It's partially about yourself. Like looking like the person that is attractive. So then you can more easily tell yourself the story about how you are that guy. But it's also the, the part of the girls also saying like, hey, look, this is the, the archetype of the guy that I'm generally into. Because you're going to get those on occasion, just lucky fucking like, you know, roll the dice, you're out of it. You've been in your head all day. But then you look like a girl's archetype of what she's supposed to like. And then she's going to want to fuck you anyways. Because she logically decided she wants to fuck somebody today. Everybody else is a fucking loser. She talked to you. And you fit her archetype of the guy that she would fuck. And now guess what? Now she's going to be more likely to fuck you. You can still fuck it up. 
but it, it makes it that much easier. However, there was a guy that was in state, like me or one of my friends, we could rip her off that guy in like a second. Um, so I guess like looks matter until a guy with status or a state comes into play, then fuck that faggot. Sorry for saying it like that way. Sorry for saying it so coarse, but that's the truth. Um, game always overpowers looks and all that other dumb shit. Um, what's your advice on uh, getting back into a dating game after a breakup, long-term success? Um, it's actually a tough one. Uh, well, treat yourself like you're sick. You got to realize when you go through a breakup, your game's not going to be nearly as good because now you're you're being going to be mean to yourself. But this, this means the long-term results for yourself. So you're going through a breakup? Cool. Um, that means that over the long-term haul, your, your game's actually going to get better. You're going to get more resolute, more grounded. Um, it might not feel that way at first. You might feel like a complete bitch, but like, but be nice to yourself. Like nobody, like you're a guy. So people are not going to be as like, as like, so a girl posts up on her Instagram. Oh no, going through a breakup. Ah, her, her feed gets fucking blown up. Cool. Well, you don't have that luxury. You have to actually learn how to become stronger, more powerful because of this. You got to like, you got to have like you, if you, if you bend or break to like the breakup pressure, um, there's nobody going to be there that's going to like fucking like, you know, have your back necessarily, unless it's like good male friends, family figures. Like um, what I would say is like reframe this as a, as something that's good. So the way that I always tell clients is that if you were to work out and your muscles hurt, it's an indication that the muscles are going to grow. You're feeling that heaviness in your chest, which is very common with breakups. That heaviness in the chest is the same thing as lactic acid in the muscles. It's an indication that you're going to grow, not on a physical level, but on a on a spiritual level on a on a grounded on a masculine level every time i go through a breakup i become something different every time you go through a breakup i want it being the same fucking way this is this is it's it's now it's now fuel for the fire it's now it's now something that you can use to to give yourself leverage to change into something fucking different every time i go through a breakup man i get i get stronger like i man every time i break up with a girl i become somebody different and it's nice it's nice knowing that no matter what, that as a man, girls can like girls will fall back on another guy. Cool. They 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 lose that momentary suffering uh in exchange for like an easy out. You don't have that. Girls don't find us attractive whenever we're going through breakups. So um play the long-term strategy. Fuck around with some sixes, some sevens. All right. So like fuck around some girls that are not nearly as attractive. Just get your like get like get over her like that way. Now what happens is you'll fuck around with some sevens, then you'll start fucking around with some eights because the sevens now are not such a big deal. And then you fuck around with some some eights and nines, then some nines and nines in general, then maybe some tens, and you work your way back up. You build up your confidence. And through the course of you doing this, you become something different. Now, uh, I know this is the most probably the most conflicting video you guys have ever seen me do, where I'm talking about the, the importance of you know taking care of yourself, hygiene, while also saying that looks are not that big a deal. Um the game's not supposed to be straightforward. This thing is convoluted as fuck. There's no straight answer or black and white answer. It's all in the grays. Anybody, any coach that ever says tries to give you some black or white answer, they don't know the fuck they're talking about. Um, it, it looks more matter, not because it matters so much to girls, but more because it matters to you. And you can't help it. It's it's gonna matter to us. It, it's the society's gonna constantly lean on you, it gives a constant pressure. And if you look like the guy that is sexy to girls, it's so much easier to believe it. It's so much easier to believe that you're good with girls and you're sexy when you work at it and you take your time with it. So, yeah. Um, uh, to AM, I'm not really sure, man. I think it's it more comes down to the individual. Some people are stronger than most, dude. I was naturally a very, I was a very big pussy when I first got into this stuff, dude. I was very soft. Like, I was very soft and I still am in certain ways. I'm very empathic. And initially, I couldn't understand how somebody could fuck somebody else over for a long time. It took me, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm such a giving person. I, I want love. And to be so utterly fucked over, it, it took me a long time to figure out. Like, honestly, it, it took me a lot of getting broken over and over again to kind of, like, find this. And still, I'm like, <coughs> getting girls is fucking easy for me. Finding one that I actually want to be with is very difficult. Um, I, I wouldn't even count the breakups, dude. It's, it's all about the process, man. I think that one of my old mentors, he said this, um, what, if, if you chose this life, what is this life trying to teach you? Don't try to count the breakups. Don't be like, it's time. I need another breakup to like, you know, to keep fucking evolving and growing. Now, um, just take each hit as it comes and tell yourself, this is a lesson 
I chose this life. If I chose this life, what is this lesson trying to teach me? And uh, if you're going through a breakup, what is this lesson trying to teach me? Because I chose this life. And if you chose this life, you're trying to teach yourself something. You chose this situation to happen. Now, if you chose this situation to happen, now you're no longer a victim to your circumstances. Uh, you're focusing on what you have to gain from the situation. What do you have to learn? Uh, for me, my psych I, I studied psychology so crazily because of my last breakup. I got really I studied, I would watch like studies from different universities. I read a bunch of books. I watched video after video on YouTube explaining to me like different types of men mental disorders, um, cluster B, cluster A types, uh, understanding how therapists would would train and work with people. Cause I actually try to fix my ex, which is the dumbest fucking thing you can ever do is try to fix somebody. Um, especially when they don't want to be fixed. If they want to be, if, they, if they're trying actively to be fixed, cool. Um, but not everybody wants to be fixed. Some people are just like stuck in the mud, stuck the way they are and will never change. Yeah. Oh, and sorry, I am for being so, uh, so harsh with you, dude. I, I just, I read this so much, man, where people always say this kind of stuff and sometimes it just gets grinding. Um, what do you focus on when warming up socially at the start of the night? Um, it depends on where I'm at. I called it tiered approaching. So tiered approaching is where I, I assess where I'm at mentally. I say to myself, okay, cool. I'm not in a very socially aware headspace. So since I'm not a socially like, or I'm like, I'm very in my head. Now, if I'm very in my head, I, st I focus on either one relaxing if I'm super out of it while little by little being a little more expansive. Um, or I focus on giving really quick, uh, um, compliments and baby approaching. So like giving passing compliments, things like that. Um, then I move from passing compliments to making friends. And then I move from making friends to being maybe more flirtatious where I go in direct. And then once I, once easier go for me, go direct, then I go indirect direct. So I call it tiered approaching where I'm at on the scale. How in my head am I? And then I move it from there. Um, a big part of getting in the zone is relaxation, which is the key to getting in a state is relaxing, which is why meditation is so big to so many pickup guys. Meditation, being relaxed. But not just the relaxation by itself. It's also the expansive energy. You can't just meditate in a fucking club and get in state. I can't be like, oh, oh. No, yeah, you also got to be expansive. You have to be talking to people too. So it's like, I, call, I almost do like an accordion style of game where... I kind of feel it out. Like sometimes I'm expansive and I'm approaching. Then I'm like, I pull it back in and I'm like relaxing and I'm chilling and I'm enjoying the music and I'm talking to my friends. If you guys see me out nowadays, you guys will see me half the time probably talking to my friends, just relax, enjoy the music, probably like smoking a cigar. And then like the other half of the time, I'm approaching people and talking to really fucking sexy, cute girls. And maybe even talking to guys because I don't just approach girls by themselves. I approach guys. I approach everybody, approach all. And you guys hear approach all, you guys are like, oh, the ugly girls is what he's talking about. Not just ugly girls. I talk to like guys couples i talk to everybody you talk to everybody everybody's like is it's like i'll see guys in the pick they'll go out in the pickup guys they'll go in the like they'll stand where all the, they'll be like fucking looking for hot girls and be like where's the hot girls where are the hot girls at and it's like dude just approach all because if you approach all you're gonna get yourself in the right headspace to attract that girl when she does come so i'm not like sitting here like oh no which girl am i gonna approach i'm like I'm talking to everybody. I'm being expansive. I'm giving guys compliments on their shoes. I'm joking and teasing. Like, dude, you're from Sacramento. I fucking knew it, dude. You, we all fucking look the same. Like, I say shit like that. Um, can you tell us this, your story since you started gaming? Um, it's a long fucking story, man. It's a long fucking story. <laughs> uh, it's um, I've been in this for 12 years now. I started off being very fucking shy. Um to points where I, I even got approach anxiety with my mother and my father and my siblings. Um, like there was nobody in my life that I didn't have approach anxiety with. And then uh, I got kind of tired of it and I felt like I was in a cage and I got very fed up with it. I, I got fed up with feeling powerless. And so I started pushing into it. And then there was a lot of things that led, led to me fucking like figuring this shit out and still figuring it out because I'm still improving. I'm still getting better at this. I know I'm 31, but my results have not stopped improving since I fucking figured out game like, when I was 19 years old, um, technically 18, but I started actually approaching when I was 19, 20. Um, but yeah, I've been doing this shit for a fucking long ass time. Uh, for a long time, there actually didn't think game would work. I, I've been doing this shit for so long. I thought the game was like, so my first couple years, so I, I got really, I, like like everybody does, when you first start off as a beginner, you get really quick initial results. And then you hit that fucking wall of intermediate purgatory. And I was like, I knew it. Game doesn't work. It looks the only thing that matter. Blah, 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 blah. And then like, as I kept pushing into it, I got desperate because my desperation, I, I was looking for solutions. I started getting coaching, started like looking outside of myself, started finding people that were actually really fucking good at game, opened up my horizons. 
which people who are actually good at game are super rare. You guys say you have natural friends. I think I've only ever met like three na ever actual naturals. And I've been in the game for a long time. Not real naturals are fucking rare. Um, very fucking rare. And um, yeah, dude, every time I thought that I hit like a new plateau or I got stuck, I'd find some new way of overcoming it. Uh, I find some new angle or find some new kind of like thought process or like this shit goes deep. It goes deep. And uh, it's actually funny. So it's like the Dunning-Kruger effect. When you first start learning about something, you think something is really simple. About five years into the game, I thought that like, I was like, I understand everything about this. And then I got like a huge ego about it. If I were to look at myself like back like seven years ago and talk to him, I'd be like, dude, you're a dumbass thinking that you understand the shit. I'll probably talk to myself like that in 10 years from now when I'm like, when I'm looking at myself, like if I were to talk to myself, if I was like, if I was to take a future version of myself and teleport him here right now, talk to me about this. Um, I would probably, uh, there's, there's no, I, I have no idea like what that guy would say to me. I'm pretty sure he'd be like looking at me like I'm a dumbass. He'd probably be excited to tell me what he learned. Uh, Zen, I have no idea, man. I really don't know. I, I don't count. I stopped counting a long time ago. I'm fucking around maybe like three, four girls a week. So who knows? Um, to be fair, like fucking too many girls gets kind of disgusting after a while. You got to be really careful, bro. Dude, I've had a lot of friends who get herpes or something like that. Or I've been lucky by fucking dodging bullets. I've had yeast infection. I've had like certain things that you can get rid of with a shot, but I never had anything permanent. And you got to be really fucking careful to stop listening to the guys who fucking promote body count as being the end all be all because those guys are idiots. And those guys are also super fucking insecure and very narcissistic. Um, also, they're engineer types, which engineer type personalities do really fucking terrible with women. I'm an I'm naturally an engineer type personality, and I had to break it, become emotionally intelligent to get good with women. If you're talking to somebody who's a very like engineer type personality, where they're like numbers, the only way you can figure out how to get good with girls is numbers, then the guy's probably fucking god awful with women. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of these guys who like promote body count and then like pay for hookers, and they like they're like that counts towards the body count, or he's like, or he'll say like something like. Uh, I'll fuck around with um, transsexuals and that goes towards the body count or, you know, if she, if she looks like a, like a 10, but is like actually a guy, it doesn't count. And it's like, dude, you, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, if that's what he likes, but if he's just doing it for the body count, for the body count, and that means I'm a better PUA, then it's like, dude, you're, you lost sight. You lost the, the forest. Like, what is it? What's the term for it? You lost the forest through the trees. Um, the point of getting good at game is not some like arbitrary number. Um, me and Avery and all my friends, we still argue on who, like, what a 10 on 10 is. Like, I'll, I'll fuck around with a girl, and I'll be like, man, she was bad. She was, like, a 9 or a 10. And my friends will be like, no, she was, like, an 8 or an 8.5. Or, like, even I will be like, oh, the girl, this girl's an 8, 8.5. And my friends will be like, no, she's a 10. And it's like, like, you can't put numbers to this shit. Um, everything is so subjective. Like, it's, it's almost impossible. This shit's too complicated to put numbers to and make it into, like, um, yeah. I approach on campus and I notice when I approach, I ask the girls the same things over and over again. Like, what's your major? Where are you from? Should I change it per approach? Um, no, I mean, if it works for you, if you're actually, all right, here's the thing. If you're actually interested in the answers, um, one of the big things, like it also depends on where you're at, like in, in your, in your development or your growth. If you're, if you're like just asking these things, cause you're trying to like, you're trying to be an engineer, then you have to learn how to actually be interested in the answers themselves. If you actually love uh, if you actually are super, <coughs> if you're actually super curious about the answers, the girls will pick it up. And then, um, yeah. Uh, so really be curious because girls pick up on sub communication and they're so the girls are so much more socially intelligent than guys are naturally. So you want to get good at picking the shit up. Um, when you rating girls, it's solely on looks or do you add personality also? Um, I think in my head it's kind of like separate. Obviously, I'll rate a girl's looks, but then her her uh, personality matters too. But like when I rate a girl, it's her looks. Yeah. Um, I'm also uh, also. Do you still approach in college campuses? Um, I haven't in a long time, but I'm about to. I started uh, actually working out on UNLV camp college campus recently, so I might start approaching again just here and there. Um, just because fuck it, why not? I know uh, Todd Valentine used to actually approach on Univity College campus, and uh, I work out there anyway, so it might be kind of good to double up on. What well, if, well, if you actually are an engineer? How do you get around that to get good? Um, just understand like that getting good with game is not get like the same way it was as getting good with engineering. Getting good with at game is so abstract and weird. Um, you you have to develop a type of intelligence that that for you doesn't make any fucking sense. 
the, the type of intelligence that you need to develop doesn't won't make any sense to you because it's emotional intelligence. And emotional intelligence is like caring, being empathetic, talking to people like humans. Um, while also, you know, also like like a, lo- a little bit of his mind fucking yourself at times. Like so if I'm winging for a client and I don't like the girl, I'll backwards rationalize that I do like the girl. So the girl doesn't pick up the fact that I don't like her so she doesn't reject me, auto-reject me because she's afraid of me rejecting her. Like dumb shit like that. Like, like who like that's so convoluted. Why? Um it's so convoluted. But yeah, it's a different type of intelligence. You, you just have to put down the engineering and like think to yourself, okay, so getting good at game is a different type of intelligence. I need to be open minded. Don't be engine, don't be like, don't try to take the engineering shit and then like merge it with like the game shit because it's like putting oil with water. It won't, it won't mix. Uh, I'm like I said, I'm a naturally an engineer's mind. My mind is very much <coughs> more directed to being an engineer, but I learned how to be emotionally intelligent. And I, and I just know there are certain things in engineering that can be merged with this. But if you want to actually learn game better, learn sales. Sales actually are more closely related to, to, uh, game than engineering will ever be i mean you almost got everything girls friends money so how do you deal with the midlife crisis um i don't know again it's like it's the framing of it i'm not i'm not even close to midlife crisis yet i'm, I'm only 31 um I'm, I'm up there now i'm not in my 20s anymore but i'm not like in my midlife crisis yet um to be fair all my friends who are the best with game their game doesn't tank till like after 40 like if you're actually the kind of guy so I'm still like 10 years in my prime, 10 years in my prime. <laughs> Break out a rap song. Um, best way, way to find wings. Uh, being the wing that you want to want in another. I'm also just being persistent and having an image or a vision of who you want. Um, you're also trying to create friendships. You, you don't even want to look for game guys. You want to look for cool guys. Um, people who are good at game are cool people. They're not like, they're not really good at game. They're not like, they're not good pickup artists. They're good. They're just cool people. They're cool guys. Like, if you guys met me out and about, which a lot of you guys have at this point because I game so fucking much, you, a lot of you guys would just be like, yeah, he's a really nice, cool guy. Yeah. That's, like, the key to game, just being a cool guy. You can do all this extra, like, fucking, like, shit. Like, I, I do know game stuff on it, like, probably more than anybody you know. Um, But I don't do it in a gamey way. I do it in a way a cool guy would do it. So it looks almost like I'm not doing game because a lot of the game shit is, like, so hidden underneath all, like, the... the, the like, I, I can also say things in a very authentic way to where that just hits right. Um, I'm, a, I'm also a good actor, honestly. I'm a great actor. So that, that's also taught. I learned how to be a good actor, and I still study acting to this day. Um, I teach that shit a lot to my people who get on my coaching calls. Like, if you got on a coaching call with me, we're going to practice acting. It's honestly a huge part of, like, what I teach. Because acting also teaches you social awareness and social intelligence. Um, what are the biggest differences between gaming girls in your early 20s, mid, light, mid to late 20s and 30s? Um, you. You're the biggest difference. So it's like the biggest difference is the fact that you just, you, you, you get more centered, more grounded and the girls sense it and pick it up and people around you sense it and pick it up. You become a better leader. <coughs> Says so reality gets stronger. Um, the girls that I date have been getting hotter and hotter and hotter still, even though I'm at 31, like technically, technically, like I should have lost, like my, my attractiveness should have been dropping since I was 23, but the girls that I date get hotter and hotter. It's because I'm more grounded and more masculine because I just don't give a fuck. Uh, all right, I'm going to end this in about five minutes because I got a, co- a coaching call coming up, but I'll answer a couple more questions. Um, what do you think of Michael Sartain saying? Cold, um, Michael Sartain is like, he's in, all right, so if you take a certain action, like let's say you buy a Toyota Camry or you buy like a Mercedes, you're tenfold more likely to say that Mercedes is the greatest car a lot around because action feeds ego. He doesn't go out and approach girls. So what do you think he's going to, what do you think he's going to backwards rationalize by approaching girls? I've seen Michael Sartain out and I've also had him talk to some of my girls and shit. And a lot of the girls said he's very socially awkward. I, I actually don't even disagree with him. I think that creating social circles, huge, fucking huge. Like that's what I'm working on now. Um, but if he was to work on his cold approach and he did work on his cold approach back in the day, he wouldn't be so fucking awkward around hot girls. And he probably would be catching up with even hotter girls. I still think he's a dope ass guy. I'd like to be fair. Um, I see him out here in Vegas all the time. Um, seems like a cool guy. It's just like if he was to, um, yeah. Um, how do you identify a natural? There's somebody that's unbelievably good with the girls. Like I like the guys that I, I I don't know how to explain it. Um, they're just I'm I'm very good with girls, like very good. And meeting somebody that's better than me, 
with girls who is just does it as a byproduct of just existing is unreal for me. And so like, I rarely run into those guys. I have a few guys that actually that I t hang out with and I'm like, oh my fucking God, how do you even fucking exist? I put in all this work to become you and you're still better than me. It's like, it's almost like just second nature. It's like watching like, like, um, like a predator, like just like, almost like, it's almost like watching, like, it's almost like they do this stuff on like, it's almost as biologically written into their DNA. Like to just be good with girls. It's not like, like I'm faking it and I'm and I learned how to be this, come this guy, but they, they've just been this guy. They've been born this person who's good with girls. And it's just so assumptive. It's like so unreal assumptive that girls are supposed to like them. It's just like, it's almost written to their DNA. All right. Uh, I'm going to go off to a coaching call right now. If you guys are also interested in getting coaching from me, text me coach, uh, C O A C O A C O A C H. I can't spell all of a sudden to 702-841-9909. Um, we can do online coaching or you can talk about boot camps, whatever you guys are interested in. Uh, I'm going to go off to this boot camp right now. Uh, well, not boot camp, but coaching call. Oh, uh, but yeah, message me up, let me know. Anyways, guys, peace.